Under pressure in the south of Ukraine, Russia fired missiles and drones into Ukrainian-held Mykolaiv on Sunday, destroying an apartment block in the shipbuilding city near the front, and said the war was trending toward uncontrolled escalation. A Russian missile strike on Sunday wiped out the top floor of an apartment block in the city, sending shrapnel and debris flying, smashing windows and cracking walls, and leaving cars crushed under the rubble. Russian Defense Minister Sergei Shaigu said, without evidence, that Ukraine could escalate by using a dirty bomb, conventional explosives laced with radioactive material. Ukraine does not have nuclear weapons, while Russia has threatened to use its nuclear arsenal. Jose, South Korean officials say their Navy fired a warning shot toward a North Korean merchant ship that had crossed the line. North Korea then responded with 10 rounds of artillery shells, accusing South Korea of violating its waters. This western sea boundary area is poorly marked. It's long disputed. And these are anxious times in the region. With that string of North Korean weapons tests in recent weeks, there are military drills between South Korea and the U.S., which is always a flashpoint for the North, and this expectation that Kim Jong-un is planning another their nuclear tests. So this exchange of fire is only increasing tension. At least 60 people have been killed in an airstrike by the Myanmar military in the northern Kachin state. The victims were at an event celebrating the anniversary of the Kachin ethnic group's political wing. We understand that this was a celebration taking place at about 9 p.m. local time last night. Uh, three Myanmar Air Force jets uh, attacked uh, what appeared to be uh, this, a big festival. Uh, several celebrated uh, Kachin singers were on stage at the time. We understand they are included in the fatalities. Um, it, this took place in Kansi village in Parkin Township. Uh, an area which is famous for its jade mining. A Korean air jet has overshot the runway while attempting to land at Cebu International Airport in the Philippines on Sunday. According to a statement released by the carrier, the Airbus A330 had already made two attempts to land amid poor weather conditions prior to the accident. It added that there were no injuries to the 162 passengers or 11 crew on board. According to the Aviation Herald, which pub publishes reports of accidents and incidents in commercial aviation, the aircraft received substantial damage including the collapse of the nose gear and penetration of the cockpit. As Kiara was a healthy and active child, this was a few months before her fourth birthday. She loved to read and sing, but most of all, she loved to skate. In early October, her mother says she gave her child flu medicine because she had a cough. The next day, she was admitted to hospital, vomiting and unable to urinate. On Saturday night, the doctor called me. They said my daughter is critical. All her organs are damaged, her brain, heart, liver and eyes. On Sunday morning, she had heart failure and she died in my lap. She's just one of more than 100 children in Indonesia who have died in recent months from acute kidney injury after being given medicinal syrup. 
Earlier this month, the World Health Organization issued a warning after cough syrup in the Gambia was also linked to the deaths of nearly 70 children. The UK is tonight guaranteed to have its third new Prime Minister in three months after Boris Johnson declared in the last hour that he will not run, despite claiming to have had enough MPs nominating him. It leaves the way clear for the former Chancellor Rishi Sunak, who today formally entered the race and who is presently the clear front runner. He joins the leader of the Commons, Penny Mordaunt, in the contest. We do know that the talks are happening today and the Tigray People's Liberation Front tweeted last night that they did arrive in South Africa and they said that military intervention won't end the current uh, conflict situation. We also saw a tweet from the government of Ethiopia who said this morning that they are on their way. But besides that, and a, a little bit of information from the AU about uh, from the Ethiopian government saying that the peace talks will take place. We don't know where, we don't know when, we don't know how many days it's been set aside for this big um, talks because there's a lot of, um, the stakes are high. This is the first time the two parties have come to the table to enter formal negotiations.